This video will demonstrate using CSS to change the text font type. Being able to display the text on your HTML documents the way you want them to look is an important part of keeping site visitors on the site and coming back. If the font you are using is not a popular web safe font and it is a bit of a distraction, then you risk the site visitor bolting off the site quicker than they can say, ow, my eyes. First, let's look at the web save fonts by doing a search for web save fonts, or you can just head on over to this site here at MIT. Hey, I used to go there. Oh, no, wait, this is the one out on the East Coast. The one I went to is Missouri Institute of Technology. Yeah, probably a little bit different. And you can just see here what they mean by web save fonts and, and kind of summarizing it. Basically, web save fonts means that more than likely the visitor's computer will have these fonts installed. So if you plan on using some off-the-wall font just because it looks cool on your computer, that's probably because you've got that font installed on your computer. Not everyone will have that particular font installed on their computer. So to be safe, use a safe web font. Ideally, you should be looking at using sans serif fonts. A sans serif font is one that doesn't have serifs. That's because sans is French for without and serif is the little squiggly or decorative flourish at the end of the strokes on the characters. Now, while these serif fonts will look pretty cool in print, they might not look so hot on web pages. Now that I've mentioned sans serif, I should also mention that there are two types of font families. Number one, the family name like Times or Arial or Impact, and two, the generic family names like serif or sans serif or monospace, fantasy, and cursive. When creating your font family inside your CSS syntax, you should list three different fonts. Start with the font you want, then a second and third font. These are called fallbacks, just in case the first choice is not installed on the viewer's computer. And always end with a generic family to let the browser pick a similar font in that generic family if no other fonts are available. And remember the generic family are those like the serifs, the sans serifs, monospace, and so on. Oh yeah, and if you're using a font with two names, like Arial Black, for example, then you need to group the name with double quotes. And all fonts are separated by commas. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our editor and take a look at what I've been rambling on about. Now, I've got a basic HTML5 document here, and in the body section, I've got some content broken up with an H1 tag, H2 tag, and a couple of paragraphs here. And up here in the head section, I've got the styling for our font families. And this is what I was referring to here as far as having at least three different. The primary one, that's the, that's the font that I really want. But if that one's not available on that particular computer, then I've got Helvetica. And then the generic font family here, sans serif. So of these types of fonts, I would much rather have a sans serif than nothing at all. But I'd rather have Arial. And I've also added a class selector here that I added down here in the second paragraph for a different font family showing you here how you should group together multiple names or basically if your font name has white space in it like for example this one does then they should be grouped together using double quotes on either end and all the fonts in this font family are separated by a comma now you see here I've only listed three you can have as many as you want and if the first one's not available then the browser will look at the second one if it's not available then it'll look at the third one and the fourth one and so on but again you should always finish up or have the last font in your family selection to be a generic font so let's see how this looks in the browser well, and by the way if it's not spelled out like for example the h1 tag content and the h2 tag content they're not defined up here in the style section so these are just going to be the default fonts that are set in a particular browser depending upon how you have your browser set then that's going to be the default font that's showed come on up here and we'll just see what this looks like inside of komodo and here we go so these two here the H1 and H2 tags that are not defined up here in the style section are just the plain default font that is set inside of this particular browser, that being Komodo. Where I have the styling app is in the paragraph right here, and this is Arial. And if Arial was not available, which more times than not it is because it's one of those web safe fonts, then it would go to Helvetica and then some type of a generic sans serif type font. Now I spelled out this one down here, the second paragraph, to have the comic font as the primary and then the Helvetica and then some sans serif. So let's come on down here and take a look. That's the primary, that's the comic font. Now in case you're wondering just how many types of fonts there are, way too many to mention in this video. 
or any video for that matter. But here's a list of some of the more popular font families. And if you wanted to have a better idea of various fonts outside of those web safe fonts, then just do a search for fonts or free fonts. Remember though, those would probably work best on some type of a print format rather than a web format. You really should stick with the web safe fonts for your web design. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on using CSS to change the font family on your HTML documents. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.